I was offered five grand for a video. Well, this was when I was like 19. I was like, double it. And I'll walk outside and I'll give it to a homeless person. And they're like, no, you won't. And I was like, double it. And I had like pacing around my neighborhood for three hours convincing this guy, like on the phone, just double the money. I promise the video will go viral and I'll give it to homeless person. I was like, $10,000 just looks better in a title. It'll get more views. I promise your, your app will do better. A lot of times people, oh boy. It's like, they think their videos are better than they are, honestly. And they tell I them, just, Jimmy, tell them. I mean, they do that, and they have horrible friend groups because you really are like the type of YouTubers you hang around. It's getting people with the right YouTuber friend group that aren't pussies and will actually tell them when their content's bad and like actually roast it and, and help them get better in a nice, positive way. Basically, what I did was I've somehow found these other like four lunatics. Three of us were college dropouts, one was a high school dropout, and one, I don't know, he just like quit his job. We were all super small YouTubers, and we basically talked every day for a thousand days in a row and did nothing but just like hyper study like what makes a good video what makes a good thumbnail what what's good pacing like how to go viral we would just get on skype every morning and like some days like i'd get on skype at 7 a.m and i'd be in the call until like 10 p.m and then i'd go to bed i wake up and i do it again we'd do things like take a thousand thumbnails and see if like there's a correlation to the brightness of the thumbnail to how many views it got imagine a world where it's just you working solo and you work 12 hours a day every day for like a year and you're just grinding, you make a mistake, you learn from it, you grind, you make a mistake, you learn from it, and you do that for like a year. And then imagine a different world where you have four friends who are also equally grinding in something similar. Friend number one makes a mistake on Friday, he teaches the other four people. Friend number two makes a mistake the next week, teaches mm -hmm. everyone. And then like you're all learning from each other's mistakes, you're all constantly studying 24 seven and downloading each other. Like after a year, you're like, two years ahead of the guy who was just solo. Do you frequently go that far out of your way to capture the thumbnail? Yeah, I mean, of course, everyone should. If people don't <coughs> click, they don't watch. So you, you want to give them something to click. Something a lot of people forget is like unsuggested on phones, thumbnails are really fucking small. Mm. So like people are editing thumbnails full blown on mm. their computer. And when you shrink it down, you can't see. We try to all around be above the rest. Anyone can click bait, but it, you, do you actually like deliver on it? We say we put 100 million Orbeez in the backyard. We put 100 million Orbeez in the backyard. Your title and thumbnail set expectations. Like what you're saying is like, I like bananas. And what you need is bananas are the best goddamn food on the planet. Like that's the type of opinion you need. Like you need something like how to get 100 million views on YouTube or not even that. That's not strong enough. You need something that makes people go, <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck did he say in that video? What the fuck? I need to know. At the very beginning of the video, to minimize drop off, you want to assure them that those expectations are being met. If you're putting a million Orbeez in a pool, don't start the video with you shopping for, you know, your mom's birthday present. At the beginning of the video, just say, this is 100 million Orbeez. We're gonna fill this pool and this entire backyard with them. Match the expectations and then you wanna exceed them. So you wanna assure people that what they clicked on is what they're getting and then blow their mind and be like, but you're also getting even more. Anytime you say the word algorithm, just replace it with audience. The algorithm didn't like that video. No, the audience didn't like that video. If I wasn't retaining a viewer, just would it make sense for you to promote it? Why would you promote a 10 minute video that people watch on average a minute and a half? I mean, every video, even the stupid ones, I learned something, you know, and that's something I'd try to make a very big point of is like, no matter how bad we mess up, like we sometimes have videos that have horrible retention. It's just like, as long as you learn from it, it's not the end of the world. Every YouTuber says it. It's like, yeah. no one will ever be able to replicate my style. It's, I gotta edit it. But newsflash, someone can. It's actually not as difficult as you think. It was good that I got a, a really strong foundation on how YouTube works and how the style of videos I wanted and everything before I scaled up the team, if that makes any sense. I just wanna make sure that's mm -hmm. clear because I've seen people try to build the team without foundation and, and knowing how to do well. I know that if we film this video, it will do well just because I've spent a decade of my life hyper obsessing over YouTube and I, I have a good pulse on it. But if you didn't have that, then you wouldn't know. Like you wouldn't be able to spend $4 million on a Squid Game because you might lose 2 million bucks and then you can't pay your people. But of course, yeah, if I didn't have these people, I, I couldn't do half the stuff I do. For the last like eight or nine years, like every dollar I've made, I just spent it the next month on content. And I just did that every single month and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and here we are. Since I was 13, there probably hasn't been a single hour that's gone by that I've been awake where I haven't thought about YouTube. Like, I'm just focused on making the best videos possible, period. I don't care about making money. I don't care about time. I don't care about anything. I just want to make the best videos on the planet. Literally all the algorithm does is reflect what the people want to a T. And if you deny that, you just make terrible videos and are trying to find a scapegoat. We do our videos in other languages as well. If you Google it, it's like only whatever, less than 10% of the world speaks English. So 90% of the world mm. can't even enjoy your content. And when, and when I realized that, I was like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> 90 percent of my the world can't even watch this stuff like we just started doing this like six months ago and it's crazy like how viral some of these videos wow, are going. 51 million and spanish the guy who does my dubs is the same guy who dubs spider-man we managed oh. to convince him so a lot of those comments are like why does he sound like spider-man or is mr v spider-man to me what's important is click through rate getting people to click on your video and then average view duration, average view percentage, or just relative retention, and you know, having them watch it. A lot of creators think click-through rate is just like the title and thumbnail and, and did they click it, but a lot of it too is did they enjoy your last video? Because if someone watches a video of yours and they loved it, you can bet the next time you're recommended, their chance of clicking is a lot higher. You know, sometimes we're filming for three or four days, like 10 hours a day, you know, 30, 40 hours of filming plus months of setup, whereas most creators probably film for a couple hours and set up for a day. Outside of just filming, I mean, we brainstorm video ideas, I mean, relentlessly, hours every day. By always doing all those things, it just distinctively sets it so far apart that it's basically, in my head, it's like, why would you not watch it? Viewers aren't stupid. They can tell when you, you know, half ASS, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, a video, or if you like really put in effort. And like, if they can tell you're putting in a lot of effort, they're gonna be more likely to click on future videos. And that type, that snowballs. And because once you build that trust, they get to a point where it doesn't matter what you upload. They just know it's high effort and they just know it's great. And you're, they're just conditioned just to watch because you have a good track record. Mm -hmm. And so with filming, it's just like trying to make sure we're doing everything we can, no matter how expensive it is, no matter how much time it takes, to make the best video possible. A lot of people, would, if they gave away 100 grand, they would make a huge deal about it. But we're, you know, sometimes we're just like, yeah, here's 100 grand. Like, thanks for watching, bye. Doing it that way makes it more fun and just more interesting. So I like to keep a little bit of it mysterious because I think that's what people enjoy. A lot of people aren't willing to put in 10 hours days because they don't like what they're doing. So it's finding what they enjoy because it is like a long grind. Like you're doing this for years, not months. So if you don't enjoy it, then you're gonna burn out. I just had the blessing of finding what I loved at a young age. So like, cause to get to this level, it takes, you know, a decade. Most people don't find what they love till their young 20s. So they'd be where I'm at in their 30s. Yeah. I just lucked out and found it when I was really young. Living your life chasing like a nicer, nicer car and a bigger and bigger box to live in is kind of like a dumb way to, to go about life. I actually, funny enough, I lived in like a super below average home and I kind of learned why famous people don't live in a, uh, below average homes because someone broke in, stole everything I owned. So I had, to, I had to get a little nicer house for security reasons, but before I was robbed, I mean like my place is like a little duplex, 700 a month. You, you get a roommate's 360 split. People think just because you go for views means you can't have fun, but you can pull views and you can have fun, which is what we purposely try to do. If you're not doing something that's just inherently fun to you, you're just quit. Just give up like you gotta at least semi enjoy what you're doing or you're gonna quit long before it gets to the point where it brings in money or, or yeah. whatever else could be driving you so find what you love and then I would just hyper obsess make sure no one doing what you're doing is doing it better make sure the videos are as good as possible you can be motivated by more than one thing I'm motivated because I want to support my mom and my family I'm motivated because I want to employ my friends and help them I'm motivated because I want to help other people I'm motivated because I want to be a youtuber I want to be I mean I feel like that's another misconception. You can have lots of things that drive you. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, like, there's just tons of stuff that drive me, and everything drives me to wanting to be a YouTuber. So I kind of obsess over it. For the people that are willing to be coachable, I, I would say like just education. Like there is a lot of misinformation out there that like people like live and breathe by. Like the weirdest stuff. I gotta upload at midnight on Wednesdays, or my videos don't do well. It's like just dumb stuff like that that just, they don't realize how badly they're like handicapping themselves. Some minor tips I could give is like, if somehow you could have a payoff at the end, then more people are gonna watch to the end just to see what happened. Whichever one of these 456 people survives the longest wins 456 grand. <laughs> Cut out all dull moments, try not to over explain things. If a camera just sits on me and I'm just talking for 20 seconds, it doesn't hold retention as well as, you know, maybe me talking and other footage popping up. It's much easier to get 5 million views on one video, then 50,000 views on 100 videos. It takes way less effort to get 5 million views on one video. Back then, which I think small YouTubers should do, is I would reply to every single comment. Yeah. And so I think a few people caught on that they would always, I would always reply. And so some people would just be like, I wonder how long it'll take for him to reply. So that was a lot of my comments when I was smaller, but yeah. it, at least it kept him coming back. In your analytics, and most of you probably know this, audience retention. You can see where people click off. Just literally go through your last 50 videos, write down where everyone clicked off, 
and then just don't do those things again. But wait a minute, Mr. Beast. What if I don't know how to actually improve my average view duration? How do I know where to start? What if I'm just a noob? Well, in order to better retain your viewers, it's first helpful to have a really deep understanding of how they experience YouTube, to put yourself in their shoes. And in this video, I explain five simple steps that will help you do just that. Check it out.